Hey guys, this is a video in my MATLAB tutorial series. This video is part two of how to store output values from all iterations of a for loop in MATLAB using pre-allocation. If you haven't watched part one, it will be linked in the description as well as in the comment section. My video on the basics of for loops will also be linked if you need a refresher on that. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. In this video, we will plot road loads on a car at various road slopes and vehicle speeds using a for loop. First, it might be worthwhile to go over the equation. The equation we have here is the summation of the various road loads on a car. This equation takes into account the rolling resistance, the grade load, which is the load when the vehicle is driven up a slope and the air resistance on the vehicle. The draw bar force is not considered in this version of the equation since we're assuming that the vehicle is not pulling a trailer. We'll probably be looking at some sort of mid-sized family sedan. Going through the various terms in the equation, we have F, which is the rolling resistance coefficient, W, which is the weight of the vehicle, the G number for the slope and as expressed as a percent, C sub D, which is the air drag coefficient, A is uh, the frontal projected area, which is the uh, projected area of the vehicle along the path of airflow, then V is the vehicle speed. The G number for the slope is given as a percentage. If you look at the diagram that I created, a tangent theta is equal to H over L, the slope percentage is 100 times h over l, uh, and that's the percentage number. Uh, and the g number is 100 times h over l. So a 15% slope would have a g number of 15. In other words, it's a g15 slope. Without going into too much more detail about the equation, we can see that the road load on the vehicle is a function of both the g number or road grade as well as the vehicle speed. We can take the rolling resistance coefficient, vehicle weight, air drag coefficient, and frontal projected area to be constants for our purposes. Final road load plot should look something like this, where we have the various grades. So here it's going up by an increment of 2, so 0% is level ground, 2%, uh, 4%, all going up to 26%, and we have uh, the vehicle speeds on the x-axis. Let's go to MATLAB and work this out. We need to start giving values for the constants. First, let's clear anything in the workspace and CLC to get rid of anything in the command window. And we're going to give the rolling coefficient a value of 0 0.02. And that's, that's a typical value. And W will say is 3,500 pounds. And we'll make a note that this is vehicle weight in pound. And C, sub, uh, C underscore D uh, will say that's 0 0.28. That's air drag coefficient. And the frontal projected area we'll say is 22 feet squared. Okay, I'm also going to create a vector of vehicle speed that goes from zero to the vehicle's top speed, which I'll assume is 215 feet per second. So I'm going to create a linearly spaced vector with 1000 elements. So V equals uh, lin space 0, comma 215, comma 1000, and uh, this is in feet per second for speed. Similarly, I'm going to create a vector for the G numbers. 
I want that vector to start at zero, which is level ground, and I want it to go up to 26, which is for a slope of 26%. I want the increment to be by two, so I'll use the colon operator this time. We have g equals zero colon two colon uh, 26, and just make a note that this is uh, uh, grades going up by 2%. Let's think about this. At a particular G number, we want to obtain the values of the road load for all vehicle speeds. So we can use the dot operator on the vehicle speed. Recall that the dot operator tells MATLAB to execute an element-wise operation instead of a matrix operation. MATLAB will calculate the load for each vehicle speed if the dot operator is used for the vehicle speed and the G number is constant. In order to have the G number be constant for an iteration, we're going to need to use a for loop. We'll write it in the following manner. First, we need to say n equals length of G, and this, uh, this tells us the number of elements in the G array. And we need to pre-allocate an array to store the road loads. How do we want to create this array? Well, to answer that question, let's revisit the graph I had shown toward the beginning of the video. This is what we're hoping to be able to obtain when the code is executed properly. If you think about it, this already kind of resembles an array. The number of rows are the, are the number of grades we're considering, and the number of columns correspond to the various vehicle speeds uh, at which we're finding the road loads. So we'll pre-allocate an array that has the number of rows corresponding to the number of road grades and the number of columns corresponding to the various vehicle speeds. Let's go back to MATLAB. So we'll pre-allocate so we'll pre-allocate an array in the following manner road load equals zeros and length v. So the number of rows, which is n, correspond to the number of road grades and the num number of columns correspond to the to vehicle speeds. And we're going to eventually plot this and in order to have in order to uh, plot everything in one graph we want to create the figure uh, outside the for loop and we're going to hold on title road loads and the x label we'll say is uh, v for vehicle speed in feet per second and the y uh, label we'll say is uh, road uh, load in pounds Let's just move this over so it looks a little bit better. Okay. And now we're ready to create the for loop. It's going to go as follows for, and then we need to give it the ind uh, indices. So index starts at um, one and is going to go up to n because we're going through the various uh, uh, grades uh, for the road. And we're going to store this in the road load array so the names must exactly match here and here and we're going to have i comma colon what we're saying here is for the ith iteration we'll be in the ith row and we'll replace uh, each column with the values of the road load that we get at the various vehicle speeds so we have f times w i'm just writing the formula here
here you have to be a little uh, careful. We need to say G parentheses, uh, parentheses I uh, because we're telling MATLAB that we want to look at the ith element in the G vector. Uh, so in this particular iteration, that value will be held constant. And we're going to divide it by 100 as, uh, as per the formula. And then we're going to multiply it by W. And we're going to add 0 0.0018, or I think it's 118, um, times C sub D times A times V. And we want to do an element-wise operation, so it's V dot uh, and then squared. This is simply the road load equation, some key notes here. Uh, once again, the pre-allocated array is road load with a capital R, and this name must exactly match since the values of this array will be replacing the values in the pre-allocated zeros array. As for the as the for loop is running through the ith iteration, MATLAB is storing road load values for the various vehicle speeds and the columns. So we're taking the ith element in the G vector and holding that value constant for the entire iteration. Now we need to plot. Uh, plot this, so we're going to plot v and against road load, and we're going to um, end it. And now, once we run it, we should get what we're hoping to obtain. So let's run it. Probably missing a parenthesis somewhere. Let's see. There we go. And as as we're expecting, uh, we we get the road load curves that uh, we saw at the beginning of the video. And <clears throat> except the only thing is that there are no labels on the curves for the road loads at various grades, and thus this plot is very confusing uh, and kind of useless. So the next step is to add some labels. We'll do this using the script. Uh, before we go ahead and do that, we want to probably take a look at the road loads array as an array. So what we have is we have uh, 14 uh, rows and a thousand columns. And recall that a thousand corresponds to uh, the number of vehicle speeds that we're considering. Uh, and 14 is the, the number of uh, road grades we're considering. Okay, so if you wanted to look at any particular value in the road loads or, uh, array, you can just go in there and look at it. Uh, now let's go, back, go ahead and add in the text. Before we manipulate the text command inside the for loop, let's talk about how the text command works. The text command requires x and y coordinates. Then you can use the sprintf function to get the text that you need. Inside the for loop, we need the x and y locations to update after each iteration so that the text is always showing up right uh, to the right of each curve. So we'll write it like, uh, like this. Say uh, graph underscore text, uh, and we're going to have it as i comma colon equals and we have the text command and then the x coordinate is always going to be the last value uh, for vehicle speed and we're going to move it to the right of that a little bit so we'll say v 1000 and we're going to move it to the right by maybe like two units and then comma and the y uh, coordinate is road load uh, and maybe we don't need exactly the thousandth uh, element. We can even do maybe 999. It should still be very, very close. I, I mean, not, uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'll just do it like that. Then we're going to have S print F, and we're going to have apostrophe, and then a percent sign. And I'm going to say 0 0.0 F because the value I want displayed here is the grade number, and I don't want any decimals on it. I wanted to show whole numbers like 0, 2, 4, 6, and so on. Okay, And then we have 
a percent sign again, and I want another percent sign because I actually want the, a percent uh, uh, symbol to show up in the graph. One percent sign is to get the word uh, grade to show up, and the other percent sign is because I actually want a percent symbol there. And then I'm going to close off the apo uh, apostrophe, and then comma, and then G sub I, and then this G sub I is going here. This value, the value of G sub I or the i value in the G uh, array will be displayed here. There will be a percent sign, and then the word, the actual word grade will show up. And we need to close off all appropriate parentheses. Uh, parentheses. Okay, that should be good. And then we should be good to run this. Let's go ahead and run it. And there we go, it looks pretty good. Uh, if we want, we can manipulate the font sizes. Uh, let's say I wanted to make it a, a font size of eight. In this particular case, we don't really need to mess around with it, but um, why not? Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, let's say I wanted to make it eight. Uh, there we go, we have it. It's, it's kind of small, but uh, that should be fine. There we have it. I hope this video has been helpful in some way. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Check out other videos on my channel, especially the MATLAB tutorial series, as well as the graphing and scientific calculator tutorial series. Also check out the math videos on my channel. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Until next time, take care guys.